A subform is inserting one form into another. Why would you want to do that? Well, here I've got my customers. I like to add another form that contains the book sales. So that way, when I come down here and navigate from one record to the next, I view not just the client, but also their corresponding orders. Now, you need to know that when you're inserting one form into another, that these tables, these forms are based upon, are related. Because if they're not related, then obviously this isn't going to work because we can't tie an order to a customer. For example, I want to see the related books that this client has purchased to be displayed in a subform down below. So if the subform is going to be based upon the book sales table, then I need to know what query or table this form is based upon. So I can check it out in the relationships window if they're related. Because if they're not, then we need to get them related. So to find out which table this form is based upon, let's go ahead and right click in a blank area, go to the design view, double click in a gray area, to bring up the property sheet for the form. And down below on the Alt tab in the record source, where it's pulling the records from, is the table customer. And that's right there. Great. Now I need to find out if we got a relationship between the two so I can insert another form in here that will pull in the book sales or the purchases that these clients have made. So let's come up here, click on the Database Tools tab, go to the Relationships group, click on Relationships, and there's book sales and customers. And do we have a link? Yes. Customer ID, the primary key, goes to the customer ID, the foreign key field in the book sales table. Fabu. Let's go ahead and close out of here. Now that we have a link, we can go ahead and now insert a form in here as a subform. Let's close out of the property sheet. To do that, let's come up here, click on the design tab, go to the controls group, click on more, and it's right there. When you hover over it, it says subform slash subreport. So not only can you insert a form into a form as a subform, you can also insert a report into another report as a subreport. But since we're working with forms, it's just going to operate on the form level as a subform. Let's go ahead and click on it and come down below. You get a plus sign, so wherever you click, it's going to add that form. But first of all, it's going to ask us a bunch of questions in this wizard based upon our answers. We'll get that link that we're looking for to the book sales table. So we can see the sales that we made to each client as we toggle through the client records. And it says, first off, what data would you like to use for your subform or subreport? Again, just ignore that report there. It's a subform. Do you want to use a table or query or do you want to use an existing form? Now, if we had a form that was based upon the book sales table, that would work. But I don't, so I'll just leave it here and click Next. You can click on the drop down arrow and it gives you a list of all the queries and tables that we have over here. It's going to be the book sales table and I want all the fields except for the customer ID. Let me double click to remove that. Why? Because it's already listed here in the main form, customer ID, and I don't want to see it twice, but eh, that's up to you. Let me go ahead and move that back up. Now, access behind the scenes will still tie it and link it up. You don't have to have the foreign key added over as a selected field for it to be able to, uh, well, keep the links together between the two tables. This is just for you if you want to see it on the front end, and I don't want to see it, so I'll leave it out. Click Next. And then it says, would you like to define which fields link your main form to the subform? Of course I do, because if they're not linked, then I'm not going to be able to find out the orders that go to a particular customer. So down below you get the default choose from a list and because that access can already detect a relationship from the primary key in the customer table, the customer ID to the foreign key, customer ID in the book sales table, well that's what it says. Go ahead and show that link between these two tables by using the customer ID. Well, just go ahead and click next, but if you don't see it here, you can go ahead and define your own and then it says, okay, here's the main form. What field in here do you want to link up to the subform? Click on the drop down arrow, it's going to be the customer ID, and then the subform, that's going to be based upon the book sales table, click on it. And do I have a customer ID? Of course not, because remember, let me click back, I didn't add it. So if I double click to add it, and I click next, and I say define, so it allows me to choose these fields again, then there you go, customer ID. And then coincidentally down below it says the same thing as we saw when we had it defaulted to choose from a list. It says for the book sales and the customer table, you got the customer ID that you're linking up. You okay with that? Yeah, but 
in any case, let me go ahead and click on back and I don't want to see the customer ID. Double click to remove it, click next. I'm going to use the default here that access was able to detect and click next. And then what name do you want to give your sub form? Well, let's do F for form and then SUB, meaning that's a sub form. We'll do book sales and hit enter on the keyboard and there we go. Now the moment that you insert this as a sub form, it automatically creates a form over here. You see where it says, well, you probably can't see it in that grid. Well, let's do this. Let's go ahead and right click on the tab and go to the form view. There we go. Oh, you see, I notice things so quickly when they're out of place. Like I can't see the rest of this. Well, we can fix it. But before we go back to the design view, there's the name of the form, F sub book sales. But also it's listed over here, F sub book sales. Why? because it's a form inserted into another form. So it's got to create the form first before it inserts it as a subform into the main form here. So if you need to make any changes, like maybe you want to take out the part number here because when I click in it, I know the books by title, but not by part number. So as you recall in an earlier training video, we can create a combo box and replace just a simple text box here that when I click in the combo box, it lists not only the part number, but the corresponding book titles that I can go, oh, that's the book title for this part number. In any case, if you want to go ahead and tweak it, you can do it, well, here in the design view of this form, or you can go ahead and open this up. Well, let's go ahead and do it. Double click. And there you go. The fields here, order ID, sales, part number, as you can see over here, order ID, sales date. Okay, it's cut off. Well, we'll have to take care of that, but you can go ahead. Let me close out of here. We'll come back to that in just a minute. And let's just go ahead and fix this and right click in a blank area, go to the design view and we can resize it, hover over, in this case, the left middle resizing handle, that orange box, until you can see arrows pointing in opposite directions, you can click and drag. Or if you're not good at hovering over those teeny tiny little boxes, with it selected, you can bring up the property sheet that if you can double click on the border, it'll bring it up. But if you can't get over the border where you can see a four way arrow, then well, you need to bring up the property sheet. You can come up here, click on the design tab, go to the tools group, click on property sheet. And you can see F sub book sales is already selected. So if you're out here and you're trying to, in any case, select it, you can click on the drop down arrow. And there's F sub book sales. So you can go ahead and select that. In any case, once you have it selected, you can, within the property sheet here on the alt tab, change its width. If you don't want to hover over and click and drag to stretch it, maybe we can make it six hit enter and then close out and okay let's hover over the border click and drag and move that over okay let's go ahead and take a look at it in fact let me hover over that gray box for the label and move it over to the left and let's right click on the tab go to the form view ah that's better now i can see all the fields as we saw well let me go ahead and save this first as we saw in the f sub book sales form double click Order ID, sales date, part number, book sold. Again, order ID, sales date, part number, book sold. So like I said, you can come back to the form and right click on that and go to the design view. And you can go ahead and delete the part number here and then come up here on the design tab, go to the controls group as we did in an earlier training video and replace the text box with a combo box. On that one, I go ahead and click in that field. It drops it down and it lists the part number and the corresponding book titles. And so when you update it in here, it'll also update it, oh, closed out of both of them, in the customer main form here in that sub form. So it'll update it there. Or you can do it here, right click, go to the design view. And here, we have to scroll down and delete it here. And then if I go ahead and substitute that as a combo box and save it, what I do in here will update the form here. So that's a main form that when it's inserted into another is a sub form. And so remember, when you do that subform sub report, it's got to create it first before it can go ahead and insert it. And so it does two things at once, it creates the form first and then it inserts it. And there we go. So when you right click, go back to the form view and I go from one record to the next, click on next, next. You can see it goes from one customer to the next, but it also updates and shows their corresponding orders they made. So Happy Town Play World had a total of 11 orders. And this inner record selection is for that form. So the any, I can go in and navigate from one order to the next. And then the Audi, of course, moves me to the next customer and their corresponding orders. So if all cleaning calls up and says, hey, 
I want to go ahead and make an order. Hey, no problem. I can come in here and put in their sales date, which could be today, and then hit the tab key and the part number. Again, if I had the combo box, it would work, but I don't, so I got to memorize these part numbers. Better yet, I wrote it down 11 121 because I don't have it memorized. HC, and then hit the tab key, and we'll say 10 books have sold. And let's go ahead and do Shift Enter. There we go. It added that number 83 for the customer fall cleaning. So what we do in here, because it's based upon, well, the customer table and also the book sales, it should update it there. So the book sales, let's see, 83. Let's go ahead and double click book sales, come down below, click new records so we can get right to the end of it. There's 83. Oh, fabulous. It actually does its job there and a total of 10 sold. Let's close out. How about a new customer? Come down below, click on new blank record. Oh, Who's the genius that designed this form? Can't even see where to click inside the field. Okay, I'm not going to answer that. So the customer ID is, let's do 11246, hit the tab key, customer name, and then salesperson. And you can see the pencil, it's in write mode. So when I hold down the shift key and hit enter, creates the customer, and then we can add some orders. So let's make sure that this customer was created which it is. Remember, we based it upon the customer table here. Good monkeys. Let's double click. Is good monkeys there? Survey says, yes, good monkeys. And you can see we don't have the address city state because why? I didn't add those fields here. So you want to keep that in mind. If you want those fields, maybe you want to add them later. But in any case, you could be missing some data. So build your forms correctly unless you got a separate form that you want to be able to, again, add that later their address and phone number and any other information that you'd like. And one last thing with these columns, if you can't see the fields like part numbers blocked off, you can hover in between the column headers until you get arrows pointing in opposite directions, click and drag. And that's what I'm talking about. If it's cut off, then you can hover in between the two and click and drag or double click to do a best fit. And so the column that's to the left of your hoverage between two will be resized and do a best fit to the longest text within that column, which is well, the only thing that we got there is part number. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.